All right. Um, so thank you guys so much for joining. This is Chorus Communications Summer School Lunch and Learn webinar series. I am your summer school host, Jamie Scott Okataya of JSA. And I'm so honored to be spending our next two weeks with you right here up until the end of August for these one hour webinar sessions. So today and next Wednesday, starting at noon Eastern. And we do have a few folks to thank. First and foremost, of course, Chorus Communications for putting together such a really creative, innovative way of getting more channel education to the marketplace. So thank you, Chorus. And thanks to our webinar partner, Eat Engage. Because of their registration platform, each week a lunch of your choice has been arriving to your door so you can chow down while learning all during the lunch hour. Today, uh, hopefully, your lunch order has already arrived and, and you are sitting back relaxing, kicking back a little bit uh, as we listen to our presenting company this week, Comcast. And as a friendly reminder, you do need to register and re-register separately each and every week so you have a, a different lunch selection. But uh, so don't forget, do it now, sign up for next week. Thanks to Chorus and our presenters, we are able to provide a little extra bonus if you attend all seven webinars. So if you're so close to six webinars, you just have one more, don't forget to register for next week. All right, uh, we wanna hear from you also. Make sure that uh, if you have any questions while Maureen and Dean are going over their presentation today, go ahead and, and click on the chat box. That's when you scroll over your Zoom box. Chat will appear on the bottom right nav and that'll open up a little chat window. Go ahead and pose your question. We'll try to get to it at the end of the webinar, time allows. Now, you don't wanna hear from me, so let's go ahead and get started. Today, we welcome Maureen O'Connell, Senior Partner Sales Manager, and Dean Romanello, Senior Partner Sales Engineer for Comcast. Maureen and Dean, welcome. Thanks for having us, Jamie. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for being here. So let's go ahead. Instead of me boring everyone with your bios, although they're great bios, but no one wants to hear me talk anymore, um, why don't we just get right to a little fast-paced interview. Um, so Maureen, we'll start with you. Tell us a little bit about your role in the organization. Sure. So I am the Senior Partner Sales Manager for Comcast Business. So as my role, um, in my role, I'm responsible for partner relationships in what we call the western part of our Comcast Freedom Region, which is technically Delaware and southeastern Pennsylvania. So I'm field-based, based out of our Philadelphia headquarters. Um, and essentially, I'm the main point of contact for all of our solution providers. So in-person support, um, you know, being the advocate for our partners, business planning, working on quotes, customer meetings, onboarding any new hires in your organization, and then, you know, working side by side with all of our partners to develop solutions with them um, for your customers throughout the Comcast footprint nationwide. Wow. And, and Dean, uh, your role? Yeah, I'm a senior sales engineer for Maureen and the, uh, another uh, sales rep, so I'm, I'm responsible for supporting them uh, in my geographical areas, the whole state of Pennsylvania. Uh, again, uh, part of Jersey and top of uh, Delaware and a little bit of Maryland. And my job is to come up with solutions, interact with the partners, help them out any way I can with uh, coming up with solutions and, uh, and uh, driving business. Wonderful. We're so so honored that you both are with us today. Um, Maureen, what are the key di differentiators, if you will, for your channel partner program? Sure. Um, I think that the one thing that we always tell partners is to really lean on the Comcast business brand. It's, you know, industry respected. We're, we constantly year over year win a lot of awards for our program. So, and Comcast business overall is just a brand that a lot of people know. So, we always say lean on that. We're obviously a stability, you know, a stable Fortune 50 company. We have a pr proven track record out there. Um, you have a dedicated indirect channel team. So there's Dean and myself. We also have an account management team. We have dedicated marketing resources. So there's a whole team. We have a staff of um, indirect channel wide, about 150 people supporting our partners. Um, and then obviously our products and services. Um, we have everything that, you know, we go from cable TV to Ethernet services and SD-WAN, um, you know, nationwide that our partners can sell with us. Wow, amazing. And so what are the client verticals that uh, Comcast usually targets successfully? Yeah, so I mean, obviously, we can pretty much sell into every industry since our products, um, you know, vary as to our offerings. But I would say the key verticals that we're very successful in are healthcare, hospitality, 
Um, and hospitality by that, I mean um, hotels down to bars and restaurants. And then the retail and financial services industries are also very um, successful verticals for us. And do you find that there are particular regions? I mean, I, I, I know we're, we're very focused right now in the Philly area. Um, are there any particular regions that your Comcast products and services cater to? Are you you're nationwide for sure? International? Or? Right. Yeah, so we're national. We're in 39 states in D.C., so we're in the majority of the major cities throughout the United States. Um, so we do cater to those markets, but for some of our products, and you'll learn a little bit about that today when we talk about our active core SD-WAN platform, um, we can step outside of our, our own footprint. So, um, you know, it really makes us a nationwide player. Oh, amazing. And uh, when we do get the, that client... Uh, uh, what is that? How long is a traditional client engagement for? How long do they uh, stay with Comcast? Is it three months, one year, five years? What's that traditional length of time? So we actually kind of look at this from two different areas. So um, on our SMB side, so that's our traditional broadband customer, on average, they stay about three years, if not longer. Um, what we call mid-market, which would be our Ethernet customers or advanced voice customers, we typically see them staying with five years or longer on average. Um, that's a, you know, we've only had that product probably around about five, six years anyway. So for the most part, our turn is very relatively low on that. So that's why we say about that five-year mark or more. Um, but what we really see is uh, as we expand more on that business Ethernet or business fiber services, that's a little bit where we do see some of that turn on the on the broadband side as customers are migrating right away from legacy broadband and upgrading into our fiber based platforms. And then talking uh, pre sale here, the typical sales cycle looks like what's that average time to get them educated and signed? Also varies um, on the on the broadband or SMB side. I mean, we can do a, typically a single call close on that. Um, it's it's relatively easy. When we're looking at larger networks, we might be seeing 60, 90 days, or even longer, depending on how big of a network or scope of the project that we're looking at. Um, but we also, I mean, we've rolled out recently some aggressive pricing in our lip buildings. We, and some of you on this call might be aware of it. We call it our Jedi promo, um, where we can same day give the customer contract for our Ethernet dedicated internet or product. So it really varies. It depends on the solution and, and what the customer's looking for. So it, it can be anywhere from a day up to 90 plus days depending. And that really shows your flexibility too, to really cater to what the client needs, which I like. Um, looking forward, what is that top trend? I know I have a feeling you're going to say SD WAN, but I don't want to put <laughs> words in your mouth. But what what is the top trend or service that your company is looking to leverage in the next 12 months? Yeah, you're absolutely right. So it's definitely our SD WAN platform. We rolled out the product um, about this time last year, um, and we've been, been progressively adding on more features and, and capabilities onto that product and. You'll hear more about it today as, you know, our future of what we're looking to do from a roadmap standpoint. But we definitely, we recognize the need there. Um, our product development team worked on this product for over three years before we rolled it out. So we knew the need was always going to be there and we continue to um, build upon that. And you'll learn more about that from us today, but we're excited about it. And I am, I couldn't ask for a better transition. I thank you so much, Maureen and Dean, for your insight. Go ahead and take controls and I will... Um, uh, remind our, our our listeners here, go ahead and mute yourselves if you haven't yet and uh, and ask any questions in that chat box. We definitely want to hear from you guys at the end of the presentation. Maureen? Great. Thank you, everyone. Oh, let's see. I don't know why it's not moving. There we go. So our agenda for today, we're going to talk about the partner opportunity with SD-WAN, the addressable market that Comcast sees. Um, Dean's going to go over a product overview, overview, give you a high level look at the architecture, product benefits, um, some of the key customer benefits. Um, I'll jump back in and give you some recent case studies that we've developed as far as wins that we've had with our product. Um, and then we'll end it with just with some next steps and tools and resources that are available to everyone that is on this call. Um, so, you know, from an industry standpoint, obviously SD-WAN, it's, it's the big buzzword. Everyone's talking about it right now. Um, and it's really being driven by, as we're talking about bandwidth intensive the applications, data the centers, you know, all these network solutions that companies are rolling out right now, they're really starting to consume the IT budget. 
and it's forcing, you know, IT leadership. They have to, they're starting to have to go from a hardware-based network um, to a software-based network. So, you know, while SD-WAN is an emerging market, what we're seeing is that it's going to continue to grow over the next four years. Few years, we actually um, saw a recent study that 83% of the workload is going to move to the cloud by 2020, which is a, definitely an interesting stat. And you can see some of the statistics that we've included on the slide from Gartner. So, really, from our standpoint, it's it's not a matter of if um, customers are going to go this route to SUN. It's a matter of when and how quickly they're going to adopt. So that's what we want to talk about today: is how our product fits into this. And then we're going to teach you some skills on how to position the Comcast SD-WAN platform. Um, so from a Comcast standpoint, we're really looking at it and what when we're sitting down with customers and Dean and I have been doing this quite often lately is sitting down in front of the customers and, and what really are trying to push them towards is developing a new approach to their network design. Um, you know, bandwidth constraints are, are a huge concern for everyone right now, and the traditional way that they're doing things um, doesn't seem to be working. You know, if we're thinking about customers that are on an old MPLS network, you know, the amount of data that they're trying to pass through their pipes, is, it's just really constrained in their network. And to give you a, a real-life example, Dean and I were out in a medical facility the other day, and they were telling us, you know, it's becoming to the point now where they've had to restrict YouTube um, in their offices, but then it's becoming an issue because a lot of their internal training videos are on YouTube. So it's leaving their IT resources up with a lot of questions of how do we figure this out? Um, and that's really where SD-WAN comes in to play as far as how do we manage this bandwidth? So, you know, there's three ways that we really talk to our customers and we say, all right, let's plan. You know, not, let's not just think about right now. Yes, we got to look at your current infrastructure, but let's look, you know, three to five years down the line and look what your network's going to look like and then build a network that's going to support your future business. The other thing is let's centralize. Um, you, we need, you know, the IT, the days of the IT um, director running around from all these different offices trying to break, fix everything um, that they have on site, anything from they're fixing the fax machine to a network outage, you know, it would be a lot easier for them to be able to centralize everything. And that's what SD-WAN with Comcast also does for them. So it provides them with, you know, a flex flexible, cost-effective um, platform that they can, with one single view, see all of their sites and, you know, allocate bandwidth and look at outages um, and get all the insights that they need into their network. And then finally, it's going to allow them to innovate. You know, as they're building out this future network, now they're going to free up some resources that they never had before, and it's really going to allow them to innovate how they're doing business within their own company. So from a Comcast standpoint, we actually call our platform Active Core. So you'll probably see this quite often, the Active Core SDN, SD-WAN network. So what is the Active Core platform? So from a Comcast standpoint, it's a hosted grade carrier solution. So we have partnered with Versa. Versa is our back, we like to call it the engine behind us. Um, but we did things a little bit differently. Um, we aren't essentially white labeling versus platform. We've taken some of their code and deployed it into our own network. We actually have our own staff that is building our SDN platform, just partnering up with Versa on that. So again, they're the, they're the engine behind the scenes, but it's really Comcast. We have a whole product development team that is working on this. Um, it offers customers VNF orchestration. There's, we've developed our own groundbreaking digital experience. So we're offering to our customers, and you'll see this in future slides, a single pane of glass portal as well as a mobile app. Um, so it's, that is really exciting to us. The same development team that actually deployed our X1 platform from a TV um, standpoint on the residential side was the same team that to develop this in-house for us. So really exciting for us, um, and you'll get to see more of that. It's really easy to use. And then touchless installation, you know, Comcast is going to be the one that, that handles this installation from the beginning to the end. You know, from the beginning, we handhold the customer through the process. We go through an entire interrogation of their network. And then, you know, we are the ones that are out there installing um, our universal CP devices to deploy this over their network. Some key features. Um, this one is something that I love. Um, and it's over the top. And anyone that's been selling Comcast or knows anything about Comcast, we've always been the carrier that says, nope, we're only going to sell our services and our footprint. Um, and this is one of the few times that we're actually saying, sure, you can get our SD-WAN platform if you don't have our network at all. Um, meaning, let's use an example. A customer has Windstream 
and PLS, but they really liked what Comcast had to say about um, their SD-WAN platform, and they weren't quite ready to migrate over, migrate off of that MPLS solution. They can take that step with Comcast and, and just go with our SD-WAN solution and layer it over top of their network. And that takes me right into that next point is, it's designed that we can do a hybrid WAN. So the customer wants to keep their existing network in place, layer the SD-WAN over top, and maybe, hey, put some broadband connections um, behind that, we have the capabilities to do that. And Dean will talk a little bit more about the different designs that we can accommodate. Um, it includes a router and firewall in our universal CP, as well as um, it's a simplified approach for the policy, man policy management. So customers are easily able to go into the portal and push down all policies. There's templates already built that if they want to push the same policy on the all sites, they could do that. Or obviously they could customize it per location, however, um, they need to uh, run their business. So from a SD-WAN over active core, um, you know, we look at it, we say it delivers simplicity, flexibility, and lower cost. So as I already said, it, it's going to perform over any network. So whether it's another carrier's network, whether it's our network, and by our network, that could be either it could be a fiber deployment or it could be our broadband deployment. We can put it over both. Um, which takes us to the next point, it expands. So um, in certain areas, you know, it might not make sense. There might be some smaller offices where the customer might not need that fiber connection or it's too cost prohibitive. We can run our coax out there and anyone that's familiar with our coax footprint, at this point, it's much broader than our fiber footprint. While we're continuing to grow out our ethernet fiber um, last mile throughout the country, we typically tend to have coax in more locations. And now that we're able to offer up to a gig over coax, you know, it becomes a viable solution for customers in some of their locations. Um, it simplifies and secures the branch offices. So, you know, it's again, back to that single pane there, the, you know, IT director can go in and see all the branch offices and keep them secure and be able at any point in the day to know what's going on at all their um, sites across the country. Um, it supports bandwidth and application performance. So, um, you know, people with our SD-WAN product can go in, take a look at the bandwidth allocation per location. They can reroute um, their application traffic. They want things like YouTube and Pandora and Sp Facebook to go out over their broadband networks. That way they can keep their primary um, fiber network for their, fi you know, primary traffic such as EMR or, or data critical applications. It offers their OPEX and low, uh, OPEX and CAPEX, sorry. Um, so it really starts to simplify down. Some of their requirements that they may have, ha may have had before from an equipment and licensing standpoint start to go away as our, requ our equipment comes in and replaces that for them. And then it allows them that flexibility to innovate and adopt new policies quickly um, within their network. And from there, I'm gonna hand it over to Dean to go over some of the architecture um, of our platform and some of the capabilities that we have. Thanks, Maureen. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, this slide here is what this is indicating is actually the architecture of how we put together the whole environment. So if you look at the top where it says active core, uh, basically we have our orchestrator, our director, and uh, we facilitate the VNFs from that active, uh, that active environment. Uh, it also includes, if you look at the top right there, a cell phone application that's also part of it. We have reporting and analytics, which is part of it also. So again, the, the basic concept of this is centralized command and control. No longer do you have to actually tell that or SSH into these individual devices uh, at the, your remote locations. Everything is uh, configurable and administrated through this digital portal that you can access. As long as you have internet access, you don't have to be on site. So. Down the bottom, what it's actually showing you here is our universal CPE, uh, which is connected to our, our Sienna or Juniper box. Uh, and then off of those, you'll see the VNFs and there are virtual network features. So what that means is as, as we come up with new features for this, you're going to be able to download them on those boxes. So the universal boxes uh, that we're going to have different environments and applications that are going to be able to be downloaded to that. So as Maureen already stated, as as uh, as businesses and environments evolve, so will this environment. Next slide. Uh, what you're looking at here is uh, just an example of uh, different ways to actually utilize our UCPE boxes with our environment. Uh, top left-hand corner is basically a single site with our box. Uh, and because our, our, the feature set with, with this environment is very robust, 
the one of the other features that we, that's very important uh, is our analytics, our, our uh, also our, our um, notification and alarming system, which is built into this environment. So in this case, even though you only have a single single connection, what you're looking at here is uh, using those those features along with this for analytics to show you exactly what type of traffic, uh, or if it does drop, the alarming system to notify you that it's down. So on the bottom, the bottom left, what you're looking at is a high availability model. So what you're looking at is two boxes. So not, not, not only do you have connectivity uh, redundancy, you also have hardware redundancy. So again, the two boxes actually speak with one another and are actually the decision maker for failover and, and, and track routing. In the upper right-hand corner, uh, you, it's a single box solution with, with dual connections, which you can also do. So now you only have, you only have co uh, connection redundancy, but you don't have hardware redundancy. But again, our UCPE box is actually the decision maker utilizing uh, an MPLS environment and, uh, and uh, broadband connection, uh, usually with a secondary site. So you would have a point-to-point -point VPN, of course, across the cable mode and back into your environment. So you, uh, you have an alternate path to get back in your MPLS network. Uh, on the bottom right, uh, what that's actually showing is if a customer already has hardware they want to utilize because they're more familiar with it or whatever, they can utilize, in this case, uh, the customer's hardware is the actual decision maker for failover, but you're still using our box. So again, you would use, you could use our box with some of the other features that the customer's router does not have, alarming notification, QoS, VPN, uh, and, and the reporting. So uh, again, this uh, the, the robust environment will will allow you to be proactive rather than than reactive. Next slide, please. What this slide is actually depicting is uh, in a traditional network back in the day. I mean, it would take you three boxes, three different devices actually that would have to be on site: your router, your firewall, and your VPN concentrator uh, that you would have to individually log into to change any kind of configuration or administrate it. Uh, these features are all built into our SD-WAN UCPE. So you've got all the features of a router, all the features of a firewall, and uh, along with, uh, with VPN connectivity between the devices. Next slide, please. Uh, this is actually uh, the boxes that we're using. They're Advantex boxes. Uh, if you look at the top, uh, you can see the differences. They're all Intel chip-based. Uh, of course, they're different, uh, different speeds. Uh, the one on the bottom, bottom or the top left is uh, good to up to about 250 meg. The one on the, uh, in the middle is good up to a gig. And, of course, the one all the way to the right is good up to 10 gig. All right, the biggest difference, of course, you can see these are the amount of RAM, the CPU sizes, and core amounts. Um, these, and these boxes are going to be chosen and used based upon the evaluation of whatever the customer's needs or pain points are. Okay, uh, this is showing you your, the active core. This is something we're very, very excited about. Uh, as Maureen already stated, we do, uh, we, we are using a Versa. Oh, as, excuse me. <laughs> um, as you can see, we are using a Versa engine, but we do have a, our own development team that has developed the actual active core environment. And this is exactly what you're looking at here. When you first log in, what you're gonna actually see uh, in, in the middle, in the in the middle window, what you're looking at there is you see device device down, port down. That is, that's going to be the first thing you see when you get a look, get into the environment, along with the actual picture of this the, the country uh, itself. So in those little circles, you're seeing the total amount of locations that actually have our you know, UCPEs deployed in them. Uh, and all you need to do is click on those those little circles. And you'll zoom closer into the to the actual geographical locations until you're finally into them. Uh, and once you're into those sites, you'll be able to look at all your analytics. You'll look at uh, you know any any anything that's up or down. It'll also give you throughput utilization, and uh, and this is basically accessible from anywhere as long as you have internet access and uh, of course you're you're authenticated uh, and have permission to get into the environment. So here you're, you're looking at on the left hand side. Here is this. Uh, it's showing you 240 locations. You see where it's red, that means that it looks like a, a, about a quarter of the sites are down right now for the sake of this, this example. And as you would click in, it's going to show you if the environment, uh, if the box is down or the individual uh, interface in the box is down. Uh, the network map on the right-hand side is actually showing you uh, a visual, of the actual point-to-point -point VPNs that are actually created between, in this case, that specific uh, site that's actually been designed as a hub and spoke. 
So it, it's got multiple VPNs coming out from the one location to all the remotes. And if you look down the bottom, you'll be able to see uh, uh, how much traffic actually is traveling through the tunnel versus outside of the tunnel. Next slide, please. And here's an example of different kinds of reports you're going to get. You can get them in uh, bar graph, pie chart, uh, you know, uh, uh, utilization charts. Uh, but you'll be able to go in. The, the actual window on the right-hand side where it says top applications is actually showing you uh, top applications. Now, that includes websites, okay, TCP, UDP ports, uh, applications, and it can be broken down uh, e even further based upon MAC address and IP address. So again, um, what this is actually doing is it, the functionality of this environment is going to be able to, you're controlling your traffic flow in, in a lot more granular way to get better utilization, uh, better reporting, uh, and, and basically uh, be, be able to manage your entire network with a, a great deal of ease. Next slide, please. Great, thank you, Dean. So I'm going to take back over from here um, and talk to you a little bit about how to win with Comcast, and then we've come up with some key questions for our partners um, to ask while you're out in front of your customers. So, you know, we look at it from two two ideals. So we're looking at partner benefits versus, and then there's channel benefits. So from a partner benefit, you know, for those of you on the phone that are, you know, deploying any type of sensitive sensitive uh, sensitive applications for uh, your customers, you know, this is where SD-WAN is a great fit for you to layer in this technology to ensure that, you know, the applications that you're out there pitching to them are going to work. Um, it allows you to consolidate branch functions for the customer. You can enable, enable edge strategies for them, simplify some of their cloud networking, and then obviously make um, network changes quickly. So, you know, for there are some partners that are probably on this call that are, you know, the, the one man shop that is doing this for some of your customers and you can still take that on. So you can still have the control um, over their network and just deploy the SD-WAN and simplify it for them and manage their network through that. Um, from a channel standpoint, you know, we all think on this call and I know Jamie could probably agree that SD-WAN is definitely, you know, a generational moment for us and, you know, this is a great opportunity for our partners to what we call land and expand, you know, land new accounts and expand upon them. You're going to, you know, on top of that, you're going to um, earn recurring revenue. You can um, definitely add on this service. So to existing accounts that, you know, already have service, I used the example earlier, customer has MTLS, they're just not sure yet if they're ready to make that move. They're still kicking the tires. If they're going to fully rip out that MPLS network, you can still go ahead and add on this SD-WAN service in the meantime as they're making that transition. Um, it offers that cloud-managed service for them, foundation for the SD, SD branch. And then um, where we always – this is key and has been key for us since we rolled out this product a year ago. We're always looking to the channel for um, input into our product roadmap. I mean, we had a meeting last week, Rob from Course was there, where we had, you know, some of our partners in the room and they were just giving us, hey, here's the things that we think are going to be critical. And our team, you know, our product team, we, we rely on the channel. We, you're our eyes and ears out there to tell us, hey, here's what you need next. Um, so, you know, if there's anyone that has some ideas for us, we're always open to hear what, open to hearing what you have to say. So I'm going to talk about some wins that we have. Um, so you'll see it's in a variety of, of different verticals, but I'll start the first one in financial. Um, so customer had 11 sites with um, an MPLS network. Um, they needed, um, as why they went with SD-WAN was they really need to simplify their network site management. They needed more bandwidth at all their sites. They were running on T Bonda T1s um, and low um, fiber bandwidth at some of their locations. Um, and at the end, they were really impressed with the reporting and um, portal capabilities that Comcast offered. So in the end, we ended up selling them 500 meg um, EDI at their main site. Um, 11, uh, there are 11 of the sites we did 100 meg. Um, and then with an SD-WAN overlay over top of that. So it ended up being an $11,800 deal over a 60-month term for that particular partner that sold it. So, um, you know, why Comcast? They, they saw not only did they get more bandwidth, but they saw also a large cost savings over what they were already um, uh, paying, and they really did enjoy our portal and thought it was a game changer for what they were using right now. 
Next one was a large retail chain. Um, they were currently, their existing network was VPNs to their corporate, mostly through DSL circuits. Um, so very surprising to hear people are still doing that. Um, they had 149 sites across the country and they ended up going with Comcast for our SD-WAN and our business voice edge um, across four franchise groups. So both, and these were both on net and off net for Comcast. Um, they went with Comcast because they wanted a single vendor. They needed simplified network management and maintenance. They needed the ability to um, add advanced IP services to store to the stores, facilities, appliance management. They ended up seeing a cost savings when they added our business voice edge um, into the mix with that. Um, and then they were able to dovetail this into their overall corporate network standards, which was a huge win for them as well. Um, next one was in um, the entertainment industry. Um, so existing network, AT&T, MPLS, they had uh, 12 sites. Um, they ended up um, needing to go, why they were looking at SD1 was the decreased demand to their IT staff. Um, and we talked about that earlier, you know, a lot of, in some of these accounts, it's just the one man who's running around to all these sites, they're running around to 12 locations to fix everything. Um, you know, it wasn't really utilizing his time efficiently and SD-WAN, by giving him that one portal with all the analytics that he needed to see, it decreased, you know, his run, having to run around from site to site. They ended up going with um, a new Ethernet dedicated internet with us, along it with some, in some locations where um, they already had their own fiber, they brought their own fiber. Um, and then layered our SD-WAN over top of that. They also um, kept their MPLS as well. So they essentially put those internet connections in in conjunction with our SD-WAN um, and are running both simultaneously. And I don't think Dean or I mentioned this earlier, but with the universal TP, we can hold up to four different connections on that box. So you know, the customer could have MPLS, they could have a dedicated internet, they can have um, you know, a wireless connection in there, they could have a broadband connection in there. Um, so we were able to satisfy most of their technology needs there. We put some fiber and coax in there, used some of their own bandwidth that they already had on site. Um, and, you know, it really eliminated their need to go across the different companies. We were able to partner with us and um, consolidate all, all that down to them. And one other thing, I'm, and I apologize, I forgot to mention this earlier. So when we were talking about being able to go over the top of another carrier, um, Comcast can also aggregate for our customers, and that's on both the broadband and the fiber side with our SD-WAN platform. So even though we're in 39 states in D.C., obviously we're not everywhere, and we recognize, for instance, we'll use New York City as an example of spectrum cable territory. So if customer, well, I'll say a customer has a site in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New York City, and they want Comcast to manage everything for them, and really all they're looking for is um, broadband connections, we'll go and we'll aggregate that for them, um, even if it is a broadband connection and layer our SD-WAN over top of that. So that is a capability that we have, and we can also do that on the fiber side as well. Um, just some key questions to ask, and I'll go through these quickly, but we'll be sure to send these out and share with you. So um, ask the customer to walk you through their current network infrastructure, what equipment they're using today. Um, talk about their geography. Does their, um, where do they reside? Any international locations? Um, Comcast is in the United States only. So that would, you know, if they do have some international sites, you know, Comcast might not be the right fit for them there at this time. Um, ask them how they envision using the network. Is it a backup to an existing? Is it going to be a standalone? Are they going to migrate this from an existing network? Um, how important is symmetrical bandwidth to them? Do they have any strict QoS requirements? Do they need static IPs? Um, what traffic are they planning on sending over their VPN? What are they currently using to manage their security at their branch office locations? Uh, what bandwidth speeds does their network need? Um, very important question, will they be bringing their own interconnect, internet connection or purchasing from Comcast or one of the affiliates that we can aggregate from? Um, here's a very big question, and this comes up a lot. Do they need any private dedicated cloud connections at AWS, Microsoft, or IBM? For those of, the, of you that aren't familiar, Comcast does have that capability. We have relationships with AWS, Microsoft, and IBM that we can have direct connections into their network for our customers. Um, ask them if they're looking at any other solutions. Um, and then last but not least, ask them what they're using for voice. It's very um, important to know that, especially when you're deploying an SD-WAN type of environment. You know, is it hosted voice? Is it PRI? Is it SIP? 
Um, and ha what do they see in the future? You know, they might be on PRI now, but are they going to host it in the future? And how is that going to affect the SD-WAN environment? So I'm just going to go through, we're about to finish up, but some partner resources that are available to you. So we obviously have Dean and I here as a dedicated channel team to you. So if you are coming across some solutions and you want to bounce it off Dean and I and you think, hey, this might be the right for, fit for Comcast, absolutely 100% engage us. If you don't have our contact information already, you know, reach out to Amy, Rob, Dan, Justin, the team. Um, they'll get you in touch with us, but we're more than happy to sit down with you, whiteboard out a solution, go out and meet with customers. That's what we're here for. We're out in the field to support our partners. Um, we have the Comcast business community available to all of our partners. So any of you that are heavy LinkedIn users, um, this is a great resource for you to um, get out there, read some articles and be known as a thought leader out there in the social media world. So all of these articles that we have on the Comcast business community, they're, you know, anywhere from executives at Comcast to people in the industry talking about different trends that they're seeing. Um, and they're, you know, all available to you to read, but also to share out with your network so you can look, be looked at as that thought leader. Um, we have our Comcast Control Center C3 tool, which Chorus uses um, with us that just is our back-end system that's available. Um, from an education standpoint, we have weekly webinars and videos, um, we, our weekly net download newsletter, product training portals. Actually, for those of you that aren't already getting our download newsletter, I very I encourage you to sign up for it. It comes out once a week, and there's an entire section within that newsletter that's dedicated to SD-WAN. So it has in there pitch decks and videos and white papers and um, infographics, all these different resources available to you that you can download, um, which just brings me right into the next part, you know, all the collateral and, um, that we have available to you. Um, it's available to anyone on this call, and it's really great information, and it really um, looks very professional, and it's really good to have when you're going out to meet with some prospective customers. Um, as a reminder, and then maybe um, this might be new to anyone that isn't aware, so right now we are running an SD-WAN SPIF. Um, we've been running this since May 22nd. So any SD-WAN deals that we have, we're actually paying um, 2x on any deals that are brought to Comcast and closed by September 21st. Um, since we are a little bit limited on time today, we are actually inviting everyone that joined this webinar today to enjoy, um, join us on Tuesday, September 11th. So this is exclusive for anyone that was on this webinar to come to the Comcast headquarters and join Dean and I for, we'll actually do a live demo of our portal and then do a technical deep dive for anyone that wants to get a little bit deeper into the product and learn more about that. So there will be a formal invite that's going to go out after this webinar, but just want to bring that up to everyone on here that, you know, we did show you some screenshots of the portal and we gave a high level overview of our architecture, but um, we're welcoming you to come in on Tuesday, September 11th to our office um, for that session. Um, and then just, you know, as people are out there talking about SD-WAN and they want to know a little bit more about Comcast and why you're pitching Comcast, you know, we've given you different selling points, but there's also, we've also been recognized for some SD-WAN innovation um, awards already. So I'd like to share that with you, you know, even though we just rolled out our product last year and, you know, there may have been some other carriers that came out with theirs before us, you know, our platform is already starting to win awards in the industry. So that's, you know, it's good for you to know that and give you that comfort and give your customers the comfort of going with Comcast. So in conclusion, um, why SD-WAN from Comcast? So obviously we can offer you with a complete SD-WAN solution. As I mentioned, that can be paired with, you know, our broadband or ethernet services, um, or it can go over the top of another network um, provider's platform. Um, our customer experience, so it's going to be one number to call for support, just like anyone that's used to our Ethernet team. Um, SD-WAN is going to be the same, stamp, um, same thing. So we're going to have one dedicated team that's supporting our SD-WAN customers. Um, I just mentioned you can sell it off net um, or on net, so nationwide, even out of footprint all throughout the United States. Um, it's going to provide the customer with that visibility and control that they need across the entire network with that simplified policy management that we spoke about. Something that we didn't talk about, and I'm sure a lot of you want to know, pricing. Um, from a Comcast standpoint, we have flat rate pricing structures. So no matter how much bandwidth consumption the customer has, we have a flat rate of $250 for our SD-WAN service. 
And then we have an additional fee for equipment on top of that. And equipment, we, as Dean said, we spec out depending on the customer's solution and requirements. Um, but they get all the features um, available through our SD WAN portal, whether they want them or they don't, all at that flat rate. Um, and it eliminates vendor locks, so enables best of breed, breed solutions. And when I'm done, I'll let Dean talk about this a little bit more. But um, this is actually the launching pad for what we call our VNF um, virtualized network functions. So you're going to hear more coming down about UTMs and firewall and router applications that customers are going to be able to download through this pro through our Active Core platform. Obviously, it's cost-effective alternative to any MPLS technology that they might have out there now. And finally, we talked about the channel support and resources. Um, before we wrap up, though, Dean, if, if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit about um, some future and, and what we're looking at um, down the line here in the next month or so. Sure, sure. Um, down the road, we're looking at because of uh, the, what actually SD, SD-WAN is part, the part, actually a part of our SD-WAN, SDN environment. So what we kept coming down the road or we're going to have a different manufacturer fi manufacturers of firewalls interfacing uh, that's going to be able to be downloaded on the box so that the box is actually showing you uh, the the actual environment of that specific manufacturer. So if you're more um, familiar with those manufacturers, um, then that they're the ones you're going to want. So you're talking about uh, Ford, and that's going to be one of them. Palo Alto is going to be another one. We have some future ones coming down the road, uh, probably Cisco and probably another one that I can't mention. So, uh, and again, these, these new features are going to be released on a monthly basis, and this is going to be constantly evolving as we move along with this product. Okay. Great. Thanks, Dean. So with yep. that, uh, we have a little over 10 minutes for any questions that you guys have for us. Absolutely. And I know there was one question um, that was pre-submitted by uh, Anthony Parrott, um, and it was more on your, your cloud services. Um, he mentioned that uh, there was a reduced Office 365 licensing uh, that you offer with a 150 limitation. Does that mean that there's only a price break on the first 150, or does that, is that a deal really specific for SMBs? Um, so our cloud services is actually, um, it's on SMB only, and I will be very honest, I don't have the answer to that because it's not handled through our group. So currently right now, we're not offering our cloud services through our indirect channel team. We're in discussions of maybe having that as a product set in the future, but right now within Comcast, we have a dedicated what we call cloud desk. Um, that handles those services for us. So um, I apologize, but I, I don't have the answer to that for you. Well, no worries, that, that's, uh, that's perfect. And, um, and we should also, um, while folks that you have any last other questions, go ahead and type them into the chat box. Um, we should also mention that um, uh, channel, uh, Chorus Communications and its partners are doing a weekly drawing for a $100 gift certificate for all those who have pre-submitted questions for our presenting companies ahead of time. So um, sadly, only Anthony, a repeat winner, has, has provided a question for this one. But next week, Greenfield guys, go ahead and pre-submit your questions. Uh, you can email them over to, um, to Buffy or your, your channel manager um, at Chorus. And, uh, and we'll make sure that uh, you are entered to win uh, to that $100 gift certificate. Um, so, um, so just a little reminder, any other questions, go ahead and um, you can uh, type it in. If not, uh, we'll, uh, I mean, it was a very thorough presentation. So I think that's a good sign of, of what a great job Dean and Maureen did. So uh, thank you uh, both for, for that uh, excellent presentation. And um, any, any other questions? Okay. Um, oh, and everyone's thanking you. <laughs> so that's really wonderful. Um, I think, uh, you know, with, with 10 minutes to go, any final words, Maureen or Dean? Or, um, and a reminder, really, that, that uh, September 11th invite um, at, your, at your headquarters, that sounded really neat. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if any questions come up in the meantime, but we're looking forward um, in conjunction with course to host you guys, you know, it's going to be really informal. We just want to give you guys a deeper look into the product, get a little bit of hands on with it, show you live how it works and, you know, have some of our technical resources there to answer any questions that you might have. Um, you know, we hope that this was helpful to you guys. If there's any particular slides in this that you'd like a copy for yourself, just please reach out to us. Um, but definitely engage us. We're, we're happy to help and happy to help you sell this product. Yeah, and I love the idea of that live demo on September 11th. That's always awesome. Um, and I love the slide, too, of, uh, you know, questions to ask. That would be a great resource. So we'll, we'll make sure we send that around. Um, so thank you again to our presenters, Maureen O'Connell and Dean Romanello of Comcast. And thank you to our partner, Eat Engage. If you were happy with your lunch, please contact your Chorus channel manager if you'd like to use that registration plus lunch ordering service for your next lunchtime prospect meeting. Always a great little uh, way to remind them of your meeting and make sure there's a little stickiness to that. And don't worry, um, uh, reminder, if you have not done so yet, please submit your question for next week's speaker uh, from 365 Data Centers. Check them out if you haven't, um, and we will enter you to win that $100 gift certificate. So thanks again for joining. I'm your summer school host, Jamie Scott Okatai of JSA. See you next week, same time, same day, our last episode of the Chorus Summer School Lunch and Learn. Thank you, everybody, and happy networking. Thanks, Jamie.